Yeah, it's live. Um, well, Steve, you want to uh, give us a bit of an intro to uh, John? For sure. John Spencer Ellis is a gentleman and a scholar. <laughs> He's the smartest fellow I know. He pretty much single-handedly began boot camps with Adventure Boot Camps, and then he has about 300 other businesses. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> He's honestly one of the coolest, smartest dudes I know. Great friend, great guy, and um, I can't speak highly enough about him. And that check is in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I appreciate that, man. Now, we do have a lot of fun together. You, you come over, hang out with my family, have dinner. I mean, it's not, it's not like we're, um, it, it's, it's not just clubs in Las Vegas. It actually is like hanging out and family stuff too. So yeah, it's all it's good. It's a real relationship, John. We, we, we have bonded, <laughs> but don't get that close to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It's horrible. So to give, give us a heads up just while we're waiting for Luca, um, John, what are you currently doing now with everything that's that's coming in with your businesses? Um, well, uh, let me think how to describe this as in few words as possible. I am taking a little bit different direction with what I do personally, but what my companies are doing, I have, I, first of all, I have a, an incredible team of people. I have a very, very smart team of educators, scientists, biomechanists, tech technologists, all these different people who help me because I don't have all those skills. So I need people who, to help me to, to put all this stuff and, and their are behind the curtain going, you know, pulling the levers and all the kind of stuff, making cool stuff happen. So I, I am grateful for them. I want to make sure everyone knows that, that it's not just a solo act. Um, we're, we're relaunching uh, Wexford University in, uh, in uh, February as an open entry, open exit degree program where you don't have to wait uh, for quarters or semesters or anything like that. And we are starting a new personal trainer certification through the university. It will be, that starts in January, it will be the most comprehensive personal trainer cer certification ever created. Unbelievable, cool stuff. And with a complete sports performance and entrepreneurial uh, modules to it as well. So that's a big, big task. Um, but what I'm doing, what, what I'm passionate about is what you're doing right now. You're in another country. Um, so um, I love to travel. Um, so uh, my wife and I created a travel blog for traveling entrepreneurs, Travel Trep, T-R-E-P, traveltrep.com. And so we teach people how to create multiple streams of passive income all on the go uh, to where you can see the world you know, get more life out of your years. And, um, and a lot of it's for trainers and coaches and experts and authors and spokespersons and a lot of the stuff that, that all of us do. And so that's really a lot of fun. And that's what I'm super passionate about. But we, you know, I do a lot of other stuff too. I'm exploring things that are not related to fitness. Uh, I am a big nerd uh, with SEO and the Google's algorithm and uh, online marketing. I love all that stuff as much as I love fitness and martial arts. So um, I geek out. I, my friend and I can talk SEO code and backlinks and content marketing for hours. And people are like, oh, my God, would you guys shut up? <laughs> <laughs> but I like it. I think I it's, love it, man. I think I it's love interesting. It. That's so cool. That's so cool. I think I think um, obviously, like you've been around for a long time, and basically, I'm the, that old. The, the father <laughs> of boot camps. Um, like I think once you get to a certain stage, like I, you gotta love what you do. You gotta love fitness, and I think everyone who's ever been in the fitness game will always love fitness. Yes. I think, but it just. To continue to challenge yourself, right. I think there's obviously other avenues you must go down when you get to a certain stage because right. you don't want anything in life to ever be easy. I think that the true entrepreneur always continues to challenge themselves every single day of their lives. So like opening up a facility or another boot camp or another chain of boot camps or another anything for you would be pretty easy. So I think it's the constant challenge that you love. It is. I each it's so so I'm a nerd, but. Each time after I accomplish something and do something that, uh, of, of whatever significance, you know, however you could deem that, then as long as I've learned from it, it was good, I help people, everything's cool, then I'm, I'm done and I want to do something new. But based on the accumulation of experience and knowledge and friendships that I've had to that point, and then I take that and I say, how can I use this in a new direction 
but benefit from the work that has been done thus far. And so each, if you look at, if you look at the chronology of my business and you look at all the different things, you can see from a distance, it probably looks like a hodgepodge of stuff. But if you look through the chronology and like on my bio page, it shows like a chronology of my businesses and the, the different ventures. And you can see that there's actually a method to the madness. There's, it's, each thing is built upon the foundation of what was done before. And that's actually what I'd like to help people with or talk about a little bit today too is, you know, planning ahead, thinking of the future because all trainers for the most part are like, how many clients I get this week? How much money did I make this week? Did I cover my nut this month? And uh, this year I want to make more than I made last year. That's all great. It's awesome. But there's so much more. And if that's as far out as you're looking, you're in serious crap. I definitely agree, man. I definitely agree. I want to shoot the first question at you, like the first question that we sort of had listed, and Steve-O can uh, and shoot the next. I think the biggest one that, that we all want to know is like, what is the one strategy that's helping you in your business right now? <clears throat> I have really good SEO, really good. For, I mean, this is, for a multi-million dollar industry, or for, or for my business, a multi-million dollar business, I spend no money on marketing, zero, <laughs> none. And, and that makes people angry sometimes, but I, I literally, <laughs> I, but I spend no money on marketing. Like if you, sometimes if you see an augmented Facebook post for six ninety seven, that's it. That's as much as I spend. No, I'm, I'm being honest. That's it. I spend no money. Steve just sent like a dead horse's head to your house or something like that. I think. did. He got angry. He got angry just then. It wouldn't be angry. the first time that someone's done that. <laughs> <laughs> you think I'm So kidding. tell us a little Tell us a little bit about the SEO that you're doing. Is it is it it's uh it's been around for a while? Like it's yeah. taken you a while to get up to that stage? You know, um, some of it is proprietary technology that my buddy developed, and um, that particular segment I'm not at liberty to discuss in great detail. And honestly, the, the, the technology is not available to any other people, so I'll, I'm going to pass to that anyway. Because he, I'm fortunately, my friend developed this incredible technology, and I'm the only person he lets use it outside of his company that is generally used for uh, telecommunications. It's crazy. What's his company? What's that? <laughs> I, we're going to talk it's, after this hangout. Well, I'll, I'll talk to you after this hangout. But I, I seriously, like, I, I, could, I can't even teach that stuff. I, I, I'm being honest. I'm not trying to hold back. I'm not trying to be an a-hole. Yeah. I really can't because I was, I was actually I had to sign a document that said I wouldn't. So I'm, I'm being honest. No, that's cool. However, that's only a small portion of it. Honestly, that's a small portion of it. What has worked is having um, multiple websites that are each uniquely indexed and optimized for the most related keyword phrases that fully encompass your list of services. And, and you know, they used to call it the Google Keyword Tool. Now they call it what, the Google Keyword Planner. Essentially the same thing. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys should live and die by that. Um, yeah, for sure. And, but that's just, what that does is just let you, here, here's the thing that I want people to think about. Simply because you call something something doesn't mean that other people call something the same something. And there's different, yep. and, and some of it's geographically specific, and some of it is age and gender specific, and some of it depends on what school you went to and what place you work at. And, and people term things in different ways. And so you need to make sure that you understand how to phrase things, word things, describe things, and do calls to action based on how different people in different groups interpret that information and the world around them and then funnel them all back into your hub of money sites. For but, sure. And, but, For sure. And, and the thing is like, when, the other thing too is like when you're doing just SEO and you're not going to promote a site or whatever, you don't always have, if the .com's gone, get a .info, a .net, a .whatever. I mean, it, there's there's a lot of great domains that have nothing to do with .com unless that's your main site because that's the default. But all the other ones are just about indexing on Google. It's and and those index well too. So like if your money site, your main site, your brand, I would definitely get the .com. Anything else? I've had I've had just as much luck with with .info. So you know save yourself a few bucks and and get a bunch of them. Get cheap hosting and and build a circle around you. Build a fortress. So, so what, what you're saying there is like a number one tip that, that people could go away, like the, the more experienced trainers or fitness professionals out there, is say their personal trainer, San Diego.com is their main site, 
they could go by a .NET or Personal Training San Diego or you know just like six or seven other sites and then link those sites back into Personal Trainer San Diego .com and have yes. the eight sites linking back into it to make it more of a super site. Yeah. Yes. Um, but there, I mean, I'm going to give you here's here's some secret sauce though. Um, if possible. Host them on, on different hosting accounts. Um, if possible, get unique uh, IP addresses. Um, if possible, um, do a different backlinking structure to each of those as well. That's really important because you don't want a footprint and you don't want to just buy 40,000 blog comments because Google's going to spank you and you'll never play in that yeah. sandbox again. Don't do crap like that. that. That will screw you up bad. So don't do that. And and people who, who fail do that. So don't do that. Um, but also, I mean, the examples you gave were good. However, I would, in addition to that, see see what what I, you what you did is a great example of what I was talking about, which isn't bad. It's just it's just common, and that is that you describe the same thing in three very very similar ways, like personal trainer San Diego, personal training in San Diego, find a personal trainer or a San Diego personal trainer. All good, nothing wrong with that. What yeah. about what about weight loss program in San Diego, women's fitness program in San Diego, uh, female personal trainer in San Diego County, San Diego County, CA personal training.net. I mean, imagine them all, but they're all a little different. And then you say fitness trainer, fitness training. And on the East coast, they often say physical trainer on the East coast. That's more yeah. common than the West coast. So, so if you're doing one in New York, you better use the word <laughs> physical trainer too. And also yeah. a, 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 what's that? You're just poking fun at Steve. Steve just froze on my end here. I don't know what happened. Um, but you can also say uh, like gym trainer. That's a common phrase also. So, I mean, there's there's all these different ways of saying it rather than just describing personal trainer in 10 real similar ways. Because then For you sure. still only work. That's still only a small group of a subset of people that who are imagining a trainer in a certain way with a certain language pattern. That has nothing to do with everyone else's reality. Ah, oh, great! You got gold here. So, so on these sites, would you would you say have more of squeeze pages or sales pages or like some blogs as well at the same time? So um, actually, um, well, there's different. Um, there's now we're getting into the 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 juicy stuff. You know, there's there's so, there's about two hundred main factors that go into Google's algorithm. And if anyone tells you they understand them completely, they're lying to you because no one knows. Google doesn't even know. All the engineers at Google don't even know all the the factors. But there are some things that are undeniable. You need to have uh, original content. You need to have fresh content. You need to have backlinks from authority sites. Um, you need to um, have uh, uh, architecture and code that is clean and easy to understand. You need to have links inside the blog. But also, they with the new latest uh, update, if you have too many links linking blog posts and blog posts within your blog, it, it becomes spammy, and they'll they'll flag you for that as well. But a few back and forth references are okay. And also linking out to other authorities. It, you know, before the thought was, I don't want to give away my traffic. It took too long to bring them here. But to some degree, with other authorities in the right situations, it's okay to refer out to other authority sites because then it shows that you're also a hub of authority giving out other okay. useful information. So there, there is a benefit to that as well. It's if they if you link to outside authority sites in the relevance to the text of like your post, right? Right, right. right. There has to be relevance. Absolutely, yeah. There has to be relevance. It just people. The thing is that it can't look hokey and it can't look contrived and it can't look like you're trying to game the system and pull one over on Google because they are way smarter than we give them credit for. It's scary. You think the NSA and the IRS are scary? Google's scary. So they, they know everything you do and think and your buying habits and, you know, when's, when's the last time you went to a birthday party? Seriously, I mean, it's, it's, it's freaky. So you can't pull a fast one on them. You got to do stuff that's legit. There's basically, there's, there's white hat, gray hat, black hat SEO. White hat is you're doing everything according to Google. Gray hat is, yeah, you might push the line. Black hat is if you get caught, you're going to get kicked out of the sandbox and you're done. So don't do that kind of yeah. stuff. Do all good stuff, quality stuff and add value to people. Another thing that improves Google rank is user engagement. So how many Facebook likes and shares and comments and retweets and all that stuff, but also downloading white papers, PDF documents, free reports, all those kind of things are also additional engagement. And 
because that also creates stickiness in the site, which is how long someone stays if they don't just bounce. So these are ways of increasing user engagement, but Google is so smart, they can say what the heck they've been doing or what they've been doing. So the, the more you can get them to do these kind of acts, Google recognizes that they understand that over time and that shows that you have things of merit and value and relevance. So they know that their searcher, their person who browses the web has a better user experience it won't switch the Bing, basically, because so, you're giving them a good a good experience. They know they have something of value, so all that stuff matters, and that's why videos are good too. Because the longer they stay on your site, the longer it shows user engagement. And not you know, it's not just that it's not just that you're trying to sell them on a video. Like, okay, here's the pitch. I do the lead in. Here's the intro. I got the lower graphic and the third of the call to action. You know, seven left. Act now, and that's all good. But if, if you don't get good rank and no one ever sees that, then that doesn't matter either. So, exactly. so you, you have to do videos of the right length, which is roughly two to three minutes for, for most people. I tend to get too lengthy on them, as you can tell by my speech here. Uh, but two to three minutes tends to be best. And when you link your YouTube video and embed it in the website, the content in the description, the tags, and the title of the video should be relevant but not exact to the content of the site or the page in which it's embedded and then also cool. use a text link and linking back to the video from your blog post have it open a new window <laughs> that's awesome have you have you used lead player before I, um, i've heard of you, it but i haven't used it no i just i just started using that i'm pretty much doing some of the stuff you're saying so i'm glad i'm also really glad this is recording so anyone watching this right now if I'm really happy that this is getting recorded because I'm going to use all this stuff, <laughs> that means you should definitely be happy that, that, that you're watching this because this is gold. Like this stuff right here now is gold. Like if you can do something where you don't have to pay for marketing, like everyone knows that, like I'll pay, like I'll pay for marketing. Marketing is like going to the casino for me. If every time I put dollars in, I, I get take a thousand dollars out. I go to the casino, the marketing casino every day. Um, but if you can start to set something up that you don't have to pay and you're going to start to become that expert and become that authority yeah. this is it right now if you can go back and listen to what we're talking about right now mm -hmm. this is probably probably pretty much the gold um that can push you to that number one spot do you agree on that's that john well there's never a guarantee of number one again if anyone tells you that they're lying to you i mean it's just yeah. a lie so so there is there's not that however um, it will increase your rank. What you want is um, my my friend Ron, who developed this other technology. He he he's he's I mean he he has a propeller, but it is retractable. Uh, however, what he said what he said was you want um, um, a, a million points of connections. Wait, how does it go? Zero degrees of. I can't, I'm trying to say this now. I don't want to screw it up. Anyway. A million points of connection and no points of separation. So basically, every imaginable way that someone could learn about you uh, and build a relationship with you, you want to provide that opportunity. You don't want to have um, a glitch in the matrix, so to speak. So everything that you do has to somehow tie together. And Steve, you've seen my stuff for a long time. You probably, like when you're looking at all the different stuff on the web and the searches and all the different stuff, you see how this one might be on marketing, this one's on business, this one's on education, this one's on careers, and this one's on building your platform. This is one after you become a fitness expert, write a book, all the different things. But it all comes back to a single point. And, and that's, that's the money site, that's the reference site, that's the authority site. But those things have relevance. The things that I do that are outside of the fitness industry that I just do for my personal enrichment and fun, just to explore the business possibility, I don't, I don't cross contaminate those. And in some cases, even though they're, they're doing their own thing, my name is nowhere on it because it's, it's irrelevant because I'm not an expert in that field and it's, it doesn't matter. Gotcha. That was, that was awesome. So, so looking back to the person, like that, that's the, I guess the biggest thing that's helping you in your business right now is the SEO. Um, it's that, but also, um, clarity, clarity, okay. um, as you can tell, I, I have a distinct ability to be a scatterbrained if I so chose. Um, squirrel, right? <laughs> so I, I have to focus and let's know, hey, Luca, what's happening, man? 
Um, I, I have to I have to let go of the periphery, the noise and the clutter and all that stuff that limits your your possibility. And and all of us that are on this right now, I guarantee you we're all ADD. Guarantee. Yeah. OK, well, it's done. So, yeah, I'm definitely ADD um, and, and colorblind and dyslexic and, and about everything else, too. So and that's the truth. So I'm a mess. So so I've had to learn how to learn a certain way to eliminate distractions. And, and what's interesting is, um, al although I'm familiar with your work, I, we don't know each other as well as I know Luca and Krebs. Yeah. But I know what I've seen in them, which is really interesting because since we first met, I've seen how much they have improved and grown their business and grown their net worth and increased their annual income and playing with big players and doing all this stuff. But the reason, I mean, they're, they're good guys and they know their stuff. But the, I think above and beyond that, the reason they've done it is they've gained clarity and they've reduced distractions. They've gotten rid of the squirrels that pass by and the bright, shiny objects that detract you from what you really want to do. And so I, I had to do that myself because I had to learn that simply because I have an interest or so, in something and maybe have a given level of proficiency, maybe not even expert level, I don't have to build something with it. I don't have to create a program or do an affiliate program or build a web. I don't have to do that simply because I like something. I need to focus on the highest use and best use of my time and not just the 80, 20, not 90, 10, not 95, five, but like 98, two, that's it. The two, the 2%, the 2%. And, and also um, what I've learned to do, which is, is helpful is only play with A players. And someone would say, well, that's kind of mean or don't be a jackass or something like that. But think about it, you guys. Because if, you, if you're always trying, and, and I want to help everyone, but if someone has an inability or an unwillingness to learn or willing to put in the hard work after they have the opportunity to learn, you don't bring them up, but they drag you down. And it's not mean, it's a truth. So the more, like when I've told the guys too, is like, I always aspire to be the dumbest person in the room. And I'm not trying to out stupid everyone, although that could happen. What I'm saying is that I want to be the person who knows the least, always, always. I, I always want to be the person who knows the least because I know that I'm gonna walk out of there smarter than I was when I walked in. And so that's really, really important. But a lot of people don't want to do that. Um, they are afraid of not being the king dingling and being able to rule the roost and have all the answers. But as much as I've taught, I actually prefer to be a student much more. Um, so when, whenever, whenever I'm a constant student, I read about 200 books a year. I have five coaches, um, and, and I've, and I've sought out the best people, and the best people. And I, and I gave this example the other day, um, you know, I've, I've done a bunch of different martial arts for like 15 years now, a long, long time, just competed in the jiu-jitsu world championships three weeks ago. Lost, but it was good because I learned where I was at. It was the ultimate bullshit detector. I have more to learn. I lost. And that's okay. But what, what's good is that in some of the other schools that I studied at, there was a lot of, there was good guys and, and, and we, I made good friends and it was a lot of fun. But after a while, like when you start becoming one of the better guys, there's not that much further to go there. You got to go somewhere else and where you're going to get punked. Right. And it's OK. It's OK. Like um, like today I worked with my jujitsu coach, world champion, fourth degree black belt, pro fighter, collegiate wrestler. Awesome. Like I got I got punked for an hour straight, but I learned a lot and I'm honest with myself that I have more to learn and it's OK. And, you know, and I, I used to uh, train with my buddy who's a um, two-time world kickboxing champ. And, um, you know, once in a while I'd say, okay, light me up. And I'm like, oh, God, why did I just say that? But what, what it does is it lets me know how much further I have to go. It gives me an honest assessment. Okay, well, you have to move faster. You, your defense wasn't good enough. You need to kick hard, whatever it is. But it, it lets me be honest with myself. And a lot of times people bullshit themselves more than they bullshit other people. And so I would yeah. rather be wrong and bad than kind and truthful uh, or, or kind and, and, and a liar to people just to tell them something that they want. And that's especially yourself. A lot of people, the reason they don't go further is because they don't 
tell themselves or, or um, express to themselves and others their current reality. It's kind of like when uh, our government gets in trouble or a corporation gets in trouble and they, they aren't honest about their current reality. They do things based on the reality that they want, not the reality they have. And how can you, how can you step forward if you don't know where your feet are now? Right? Like you're just, you're like living this grand illusion. It's probably a good good part to ask you the second question, John, which is like this is the, this will be a fun one. Um, if you could go back and tell your twenty year twenty year old self something uh, about business and life, what would it be? You know what? Before I answer that, I want to give a book recommendation to our our friend John Heffron, um, who uh, he and my other friend Topher Morrison just came out with a book called "I Come to You from the Future." <laughs> And it's basically uh, it's two two forty something year old guys teaching you how to not make your life suck. It, but so it's called it's a it's on Kindle. It's called I Come to You from the Future. It went to number one. Get it because it's funny, it's helpful, and it, it's so. There's there's my shameless plug for my buddies. Um, but but it but it's good info, and people need to do this because I mean, if you think you don't have a lot to learn or a long way to go, or you haven't learned that much, just go back and say to yourself. Would I have done this exact same thing one year ago? And most of, most of the time, the answer is no. You wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do the same thing you did today the same way a year ago because you're smarter now. You have more experience. So what would I tell my 20-year-old self? Um, 20. Um, I was pretty clueless at 20. And I'm not saying I'm far from that now, but I was definitely clueless at 20. Um, I would have saved more money. I would have invested more. Um, I wouldn't have had so many girlfriends <laughs> just because I just go hang out and, and chill out with the boys and go out and have fun and, 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 and not have so many girlfriends. I would, that would have been part of it. Um, a little too much drama, uh, but planning for the future, but it's so hard when you're young, when you're, when you're a young person starting out because everything is like instant gratification. You want to go, 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 go. I want it now. I got to have it now. I can't wait. But that screws you up. And if you can learn to control that com compulsive behavior, there's a time to be excessive, I guess, and, and to be spontaneous like that. And that's okay. But if that's how you do everything in life, you're probably going to be screwed up. So you have to learn to delay gratification, to plan for the future. And so this is what I'd be telling myself. And what I, what I call it now is planting oak trees instead of flowers. Flowers are pretty, but they die every year. You got to weed them. You got you to uh, tend to them. But they're beautiful. And you get immediate gratification because they bloom every day, right? And then they close up at night. starts all over again. However, I plant oak trees. It takes longer, but they... You, you could, a full one, you could run a truck into and the truck's going to split in half before the tree falls over, right? <laughs> So it's going to provide protection, a barrier, shelter from a storm. Um, it will shield you in tough times and it will provide nourishment, if you so choose, for a long time. And so, but it's tough to do that. And people say, but I can't wait. I can't wait to do an oak tree because I need something now. But this is, so here's, here's what I would be telling myself again at age 20. I plant a new oak tree about every 30 days. So what happens? There's every 30 days, there's another tree that's starting to grow, starting to grow, starting to grow. Five, 10, 15, 20 years later, you have a forest. And it's awesome because now that forest is also an autopilot machine that doesn't require any marketing dollars to make millions of dollars. But you can't do that if all you're doing is like the latest, greatest thing, you know, like I, I love gadgets. And I like stuff. And here's this latest trick here. And there's this tactic and do this kind of stuff. I love all that stuff. I think it's great. But people lack the fundamental structure of their business. Um, and they don't they don't they don't have the, the foresight. So I would say I say that to myself as well. Another thing I would say is good, get a good accountant, attorney and financial planner now. And one guy, I said this on Facebook, and some guy goes, yeah, but that's you, and I can't afford a, a financial planner. I said, you can't afford not to have one. 
you, you can't you can't do that because if you it doesn't matter what you earn it's what you keep and because i have a good attorney and a financial planner and an accountant i'm able to keep more and do more and share more and give more because it's structured properly so you know every you know and people are watching this all over the world there's different structural formats for a corporation llc and they had different things in the uk i'm not sure all the different uh, uh limited i think is one of them it's called forgive me if i got that wrong but everyone's a little different every situation is a little different but if you are not planning in advance like that like retirement account um uh, real estate investments and, people, and for someone just starting out they go wow i just got certified what am i what, why am i doing this i i, I got to get a client yes that's true but start now and so everything you do is smart don't be dumb for five years and then turn on the smart switch be smart yeah, from the start sure. and do it right because you can be way ahead of where i'm at because i was stupid for a long time and so i started to like get i picked up the clue phone and it was ringing but apparently i had my head turned <laughs> or my arm was broken i couldn't pick it up i don't know so it took me a while to get all this stuff straight and believe me it's not perfect it's not, but it's getting better all the time. I'm constantly learning. And I'm willing to learn because I, I want to be that dumbest person in the room. I want to hang out with the people that are willing to teach me something new. And, and, and this, as the saying goes, uh, the dumbest person says, I already know that. And that's true. I think I think like if you if anyone can take anything else from what you've said tonight is like is literally be that dumbest person in the room. Like I'm always striving to be the dumbest person in the room. It's uh, that's why I join masterminds. It's why I I you know buy any course. It's like it's it's literally if I can learn one thing from that room or from that course or from that mastermind, it just takes me up that one little notch because I like I know that the more you learn, the more you learn you don't know. So, well, yeah, and to be honest about that, though, too, a lot of people lie to themselves and others about that. But if you're honest about that, after you have that revelation, then that's that's good. But a lot of people aren't willing to do that, and that will hold you back. That will screw you up. You know, like I think that sometimes, I think that sometimes, John, too, is because uh, the people that hold themselves up don't want to say that they want to learn more because then it's like, oh well. If I if I if I say that I don't know more than you, then like you know people won't respect me. But right. the, the truth is, is that we all need to learn more. And if if you're not constantly evolving, then what are you doing? Well, that that just goes to insecurity, which is yeah. is part of not being honest with yourself. So it all ties back. But you're you're 100 right. But you know, I I know we'll, we'll probably talk about you guys' event here in a little bit. But it, it, that's a great example of why people need to go to an event like yours is because, and this is not a shameless plug, this is the truth. This is, if pe when, a lot of times people are afraid, they go, yeah, but those people are more successful and they have this and they have, well, first of all, a lot of people are full of crap, okay? So only believe half of, <laughs> only believe about half of that, okay? But even if they're, even if everyone is truthful about that, be willing to learn, improve your BS meter, that's also good, but but be it's okay to ask questions. It's so it's cool. Everyone everyone at events like this are so nice. It's so cool. It's not uh, you know a testosterone fest. Maybe at the clubs later. Just saying. But not during the event. <laughs> I'm just picturing Luca doing the fist pump, standing up, holding court. That's what that's what <laughs> you guys. That's what Kelly and my wife. That's what we we call it when when we see Krebs and Luca at a club, and and like they're literally holding court. It's like they're like the whole they get the whole place. It's ridiculous, but I don't know how you do it. I mean, it's like mesmerizing. It's funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Dal 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 What's it? What's I love, like, like, I think, like, like you said there as well with clarity, like, I think if more people can have clarity on themselves and their business, I think it changes the game for them. Like I tell tell everyone, no matter who it is, um, the biggest thing they have to work out first is is what their perfect day is and and what that actually means to them. And, and inside their perfect day is like what they're doing, what they're driving, what they're doing, everything. But um, with with that perfect day, it's like 
how much money do you need to make mm-hmm. to live your perfect day and then bring that back to how much products do you need to sell to right. make that much money to live that perfect day. As soon as you work that out, then you're like, okay, so if then if I want to save 10000 a month, then I need to just sell that much more and live in my perfect day plus saving that money. Right. All of a sudden, you know, you've saved all the money you need every single year. You've got your clarity for your future. Plus, you're living your ideal life all because you decided to start living your perfect day. Uh, you know, I, I, I agree with you and I describe it a little different. Um, so, I say perfect day, but I say perfect uh, average day because a perfect day may be like something that, you know, it's like the Shangri-La, the epiphany moment. Oh, the clouds part, the angels sing, you know, and that's cool, but that probably won't happen on an average day. So I, 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 I'm in a hundred percent agreement with you. I just call it something a little differently. I just call it your ideal average day. And then what you do is this process mentally and physically, you go through it and you imagine yourself at your end goal, your end destination, wherever you place it in your timeline, is it to this side, this side out in front, you know, visualize it wherever it is, but, but imagine yourself there. And then once you're there, cause a lot of people like, you know, using like law of attraction or visualization, all this kind of stuff, which is fine. If that's your thing, that's cool. But if you just already imagine yourself there and that's it. And then you think, because I'm already there and I'm imagining myself as a millionaire and this kind of stuff, it will magically appear. Not so, because what happened, well, because you got to do the work for one, but, but the other thing is that subconsciously from a neurological perspective, this is true. This is, this is science, man. So sounds funny, but it's science. But when you, when you say that to yourself, but you haven't done the work, but you, you, you haven't done the things is, 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 is Luca just laughing at me? Oh my gosh. So, but you, if you, your body already thinks you're there, what are you doing? You sneezing? What are you doing? No, look, look, look at crazy. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't see that. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love oh. it. I, see, I totally screwed up. I was trying to say something really profound, and now, it's now just I'm totally trying to focus up. on you. Man. Oh my god, so funny. So, <laughs> all right, all right, I'm gonna try to figure out where I was. Okay. Sorry. Holy crap, that's so funny. We know I can't. I can't believe we get anything done. To be honest with you, so if you are, if you're already, if you, if you I'm, a, I'm afraid to look down now. If you're, if you say you're already there, your brain doesn't do the work to do the things to get you there because it thinks it already arrived. But it's a fantasy because you really haven't. So what you do is you go out to that point. I keep looking down at crabs now. You go out to that point. Imagine that ideal average day, the average li- the, or the the lifestyle you want to live. And then you work backwards. What were the stepping stones? You can go up pavers, stepping stones, steps, stairs, I don't care what you call it, to get back to where you are now because that's your current reality because that's where we're honest, right? We've got to be honest with ourselves first. So you already imagined out in the future what you want, but then you have to go backwards to your current state, current space, current reality, current resources and support systems because that all matters. And then you can take those steps because you know where you want to go. But a lot of people are like this. There was a an old Monty Python skit <clears throat> called The Race to Nowhere. And in this, they they all start at the line, no typical British humor, and they're and they're they're all and they're screwed up and stuff. They got the dumb headbands on and the Richard Simmons shorts. But they're but they're gonna race. They're at the line, and the gun goes off, and they all run in all different directions, just scattered, because it was the race to nowhere. No one had any direction, and no one ever won. And that's what most of the people do. They're in a, their life is a Monty Python skit. So, so the skit just ended. No, no one knew what the finish line was. They didn't know the end. They didn't know the uh, final objective. And they didn't know their, their destination. So nothing happened. They never arrived. So don't live your life as a Monty Python skit. But if they had gone to the finish line first, knew where it was, and then took the path back to their current reality... Then they can do that. But I guarantee you 90%, of, well, I mean, this is a different group because, because they're forward thinking enough to pay attention to this. The, okay, 90% of the average trainers, not the people watching this, but the average trainers have never considered that. Or they went out there and then they just go, all right, that's cool. That would be awesome. Okay, well, I mean, I got, I got uh, an appointment before I'm going to take a lunch break. 
you know, and, and that's cool. You got to pay your bills, but that's, you have to have the foresight. You have to really, really think it through and be strategic about it. And you don't have to drive yourself crazy. It's fun. It's fun. And then what you do is you go back and you think, oh my gosh, all this stuff really happened. So like on, on a, on a micro level, what I do personally is, uh, every December between Christmas and New Year's, I've, I've already started this year. I started a little bit early because I carried stuff over from this year, but I write out all the things I want to do for the next year, the next calendar year. And I subdivide it and categorize it and organize it from personal, financial, uh, what competition am I going to do? Where am I going to keep my body fat? Um, uh, each division of my company, um, each of our, our the places we, we we split our time between a, a couple different places. So what are we going to do at each house? And, and are, are we going to do upgrade this or that? And uh, I want to ride my bike different places. And, and we, we're spending a lot of time traveling. Uh, what new business ventures, JVs and all that kind of stuff. And I put it all out and I categorize it each thing. And then I give myself an approximate realistic deadline because things change. You got to be a little flexible, too. So that's like the macro level for the year. But it all goes towards that future goal, which I've already created. Even though it can be tweaked over time, it's already been created. So this is a one-year plan because that's one more step to get me to that end destination, the finish line. And then each day I have to-dos. Not a crazy list because you're not going to get anything done. You're just going to make yourself sick. But you, you do one um, each day you get a couple things done but that is a is a step towards one of those annual goals so daily to do's lead towards the annual goals the annual goal is a bigger step towards the finish line but the, the here let me let's say this one more thing the point of the journey is not to arrive so a lot of people think that you like it, it's like it's it's only it's kind of like when people say Oh my God, he's old. Like, like that happened overnight. No, you've been dying since the day you were born. It's a process, you know, like it, it continues, right? It's a progression. But people think the same thing about success. They think, man, I'm not successful. She's not successful. Nothing happened. And you're like, holy crap, they're successful. Or it's like if someone, they, you know, they, they get a video on MTV or VH1 or they get a the hit on the radio and people are like, God, they came out of nowhere. No, go, go look at their Wikipedia, their IMDb page and look at all the work, all the effort, all the struggle, all the sacrifice. And it's a 20 year overnight success. And that's the reality. But a lot of people miss that part of it or they think that it just happens. And then, but when you, whatever success is, because it's unique to everyone. But it's not like you arrive and it's over. It doesn't happen. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a progression. And um, it, I think what it is too is it's, it's an, an increased level of comfort and security and understanding and, and, and relaxation also because you can do things that, that you want to do rather than all the things that you always have to do. And you also over time learn to say no more than you say yes. Because when you're first starting out, you want to say yes to a lot of different things because you want to see, you know, what sticks, right? And that's understandable. But you still, even in the beginning, still need to use some discretion. But as you become more successful, more focused, just like you guys have done over the last couple of years, you throw out the periphery, you throw out the noise, you throw out the clutter, you learn to say no more than you say yes. And you get the clarity and then you get the results. Do you think do you think clarity is is obviously the biggest key to helping people get their success because if they know where that end goal is it helps them stage the process to get there. Yeah, because there's so I forget what the I don't remember what it is, but we see what like 500 or 5000 marketing or advertising impressions a day, the average person now. Oh, yes. 3000 a 3, day. 3000 a day. Okay. So that's a lot. That's a lot. And that's a lot of possibility and a lot of confusion and a lot of distraction. And it's okay to notice things. You want to be informed, but not inundated. That's a huge distinction. Be informed, yeah. but not inundated. You know, it's like watch the news. I have the TV off to the side here. I'll watch the news for like 10 minutes. Understand what's happening in the world. How do I fit into it? What can I learn from it? Is there a benefit to what's happening today? Got it. Enough. Turn off that crap. I don't, I don't want to hear about the, the horrible things happening. I, want to, I need to understand it, but I don't want to be inundated and, and uh, uh, filled with that. Then I, I want to fill my mind with good stuff. 
And so that's when I put on a lot of cool podcasts that teach me the things I want to do. Awesome. awesome. You, think you think that's that's, that's also a, like because there is like three thousand marketing messages a day, twenty one thousand a week, which is insane. You think that's a reason why these fitness professionals up and coming need to start to become experts in their own niche and, and find a niche to fit inside? Um. Yes and no. Um. You do need to clarify who you are, because you you can't do a shotgun blast because that won't work. Um, but I, yeah, I, you know, I, I guess you're, yeah, what you're saying, because if there's, if you clearly define who you are, it all helps other people cl cut through the clutter as well. And you're also going to get more people who are more in sync with who you are and what you want and, and what you're about. Um, but the fact is that people who have a niche generally make a lot more money. That's just the way it is. And and it's easier to stand out in a crowd and it's easier to give an elevator pitch and it's easier to identify yourself and become a leader in a niche. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't be a I, I, like I th Yeah, like I think like if, like the reason I'm saying is like, you know, like I, I say it to people, if you just do fat loss, like there's so many people seeing fat loss here, fat loss there, everywhere, every single day of their life. But like, like I, I always try and tell people, like I own gyms as well, so like it's hard to niche specific down like for the gyms. But like with personal trainers up and coming, like if they can niche themselves as fat loss for PCOS for like polycystic ovary syndrome, then if they can become the expert in that and have the clarity to to be that person, then instead of their marketing their message they can just people have people coming to them instead of them going to people that's right i mean that that is a heck of a niche but however it's 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 i mean it is i mean that's that's pretty specific but i'm sure there's still a lot of people that that would appeal to it'd be interesting to see the marketing on that because that would have to be done very tactfully too so i just yeah. Random thought. There, there's there's two hundred and fifty thousand people on six fan pages I found the other day for PCOS. You know what? Um, I'm gonna give you. Uh, you want a resource? Can I say it now? Yeah. 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 Um, Histersister.com. It's for women who have had hysterectomies or are contemplating it or at that point in their life where they they need uh, information. It's a it's a, a community. Great resource, but um, you can do your thing and, and be a valuable resource for them. And uh, it's it's a rabid fan base and a good information too. A lot of doctors actually refer to that. It's a support group for women who are going through all those different types of, of surgeries and uh, you know uh, ovarian issues and hysterectomies and um, yeah. menopause and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a good resource and it, it's okay because there's a lot of guys in there offering advice to who are experts and, and so it's okay, the dudes are welcome. Yeah, for sure. Like, like I say that just purely due to the fact that, like, I think there's so many trainers coming out now who all want to be the fat loss guru or whatever it is. But like, you know, you can be the strength and conditioning guru for golf. Um, like, you know, like, you know, you can you can niche it down just a little bit. So, or if not, like, you are essentially just competing with if you're going online, competing with the rest of the world. Yeah, and that's tough. It's tough to stand out like that. I mean, if you think of. Um, you know, like Mike Mahler, I think, you know, he's a kettlebell expert. He's really good. Like if I had to go to almost anyone in North America, he's one of the guys I'm going to because I know he knows his yeah. stuff and hormone optimization, all kind of stuff. That's that's his gig. That's that's pretty specific. Although, you know, there's there's one guy out there who does kettlebells just for jujitsu players. That's his thing. <laughs> you know, and then I saw another guy who did strength training for jujitsu guys over 40. <laughs> now, but you know what there's a lot of us so yeah <laughs> but but it's a it's a good niche because you know there's it's it's different you want to you want to you know play hard and and be able to do well and um i mean that's that all that kind of stuff is so interesting to me to how people can develop these niches and do so well with it um and um even the the stuff that uh krebs and luke are doing uh with the the men's transformation programs and all that that's not all that common and you guys are crushing it. I mean, that's great. I mean, it's just, really a lot of times it just becomes, uh, I think that people don't listen enough or like read in between the lines as far as what, uh, you know, even people in, at your gym or people around you are saying. Because, you know, we started the man's formation and Travis does, I mean, kills this stuff too, man. Like, um, but it, I just heard a lot of guys talking about seeing the athletes train at my gym and they were like, you know, 30, 35, 40 years old and like, man, like we want to do stuff like that. 
right? right? And then you dig into it, and like I mean, we pretty much started that man's formation program off of the fact that we had guys in boot camp saying we want to do that. And I just started talking to them and taking notes on a notepad, the words they were saying, the things that they want to help with, what their pro problems were. And then, you know, I actually, you know, as far as copy and things like that, like you go and find people that are already doing that online because people are like, well, how do I market to them or how do I get the copy or how do I get these words and stuff like that? And it's like, well, there's people out there already doing it, uh, you know, for, but maybe just on a grander scale like online. Uh, and, you know, and that's become now like shit. I mean, we, we're probably doing, uh, you know, 40, 50 grand a year just off of that program, front end and back end. And, um, be because, you know, we listened, heard what people wanted, and then gave them what they wanted. And then knowing that there's more and more people just like that out there and then targeting to that market. Well, and it's, it's such a different... Um, it's funny because when I first started doing Adventure Boot Camp, we did... Uh, they were, they were co-ed. And, and now it's women's only, for the most part. Some, some of the locations do co-ed, uh, or they'll do just a men's program. But even though... It's it's a different it's a huge discrepancy between the ability of a very very fit man and a very unfit woman and that's not always the way it is so I'm just I'm just giving you an extreme example so it makes it hard to create congruency in the class so everyone can stay together on certain exercises because of the frequency the intensity the duration or the combination or if you're running or doing whatever it's just a, a bigger discrepancy in ability it can be reversed uh, but so. And, and the group dynamics are different. And it was interesting is when I used to do co-ed camps, the guys were not sexually inappropriate. They weren't a-holes to the women. They were, they were nice. But what happened is they were inappropriately competitive and they acted like ass clowns. And, and it became a distraction. So I, it's far better to do a men's only program, I think, based on, on you know, what you guys are doing. And what you're doing, I think, is, is a really smart idea. We, we have men's only as well. Like, our men's only one, like, absolutely kills it. Like, uh, we have a female only 45-minute 45, 45 strength classes, and we have men's only. And, and the guys literally are guys who've played sports in the past and can't. And, like, once you, like, play, like, football or something like that past a certain age, you don't want to be playing football anymore because shit just breaks. Um, so, like, they're looking for that competitive edge that they don't get anywhere anymore. They like to lift against each other. They like to enjoy the transformation. They like to have the camaraderie push each other through the sessions um, that they don't get anymore, and you're giving them a place to be a man. Yeah, and, and un under the guy rules, I guess, right? So they, they probably will act and be a little different than they would in a co-ed class. And it's probably just like the women when they get together, they like to do the ladies thing, which is totally okay, totally you know acceptable. The guys want to do the same kind of thing. You know, it's like um, guys night out and girls night out, except it's during the day and it's exercise, but it's, ma it's male bonding. So it's good stuff. Exactly. Hey, Luke, you want to hit that next question? You know what we're up to, man? Lucas uh, is muted. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm unmuted now. There you go. Yeah, the thing is, uh, it's it's not pulled up on my on my uh, on my thing. So Krebs, you can go at it. Cause Krebs, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Actually, what I was gonna ask John is like, um, maybe he could just give us like a sneak peek, like a 60 second rundown of some of the things that he. I mean, I know he probably doesn't have. Obviously, it's so far out. He doesn't have his presentation set up, but maybe give us a taste, JSE, of some things you can talk about um, that you're going to talk about at changing the game, our event in February, uh, end of you know early March. Well, you're right. It, it is early at the at go. <laughs> oh my God, he started the clock. Oh my God. You know what? Um, I. I t <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. I can't believe we get anything done. It's amazing. I can't even think when that's going You're on. Killing me right now. See? There's no pressure. There's no pressure at all. Isn't that all funny? Right, like ahead. I cannot think when that thing's going. Like it, my brain just shuts off. <laughs> Dude, you wouldn't make it on Jeopardy, JSC. No, I don't. No, I, I, no, I, 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 no, I don't think I'd do well with that at all. Um, all right, with no timer, why don't you just give us a okay. rundown of maybe some things, or maybe some things that you know they don't know about you, things you can share with like you know guys that are or girls that are just getting started in the fitness industry. Um, you know, people seem to enjoy when I, I do the mindset stuff, um, yeah. because 
that is so much of it. <clears throat> so I can't, I, you know, I, I, we'll, we'll let people comment. They can comment on Facebook or your blog or whatever, and, and I'll give some options and they can tell us what, what they want. And then we'll, and I'll do that. Um, I can teach a lot of SEO, a lot of stuff that blow your mind and, and save you a bunch of money and make you a bunch of money. So people tend to like that. Some, some really cool stuff that <laughs> is, it takes time. It's not super techie, but you just got to do it. And I can teach you that and you will make more money. You will. You just got to do it. <laughs> My God, when, when you have all this fancy stuff, man, I have none of that. So, um, so I can teach that. And then people tend to like it when I talk about, you know, the the uh, the clarity, the mindset, the coaching, the success principles kind of stuff. Because what what's interesting is every business event I've ever been to or spoken at um, here on the East Coast uh, or in, in the UK or whatever. Um, Every business event turns into, to some degree, mindset and personal development because it's such a huge portion because there's so many people who have ability and they're already really good trainers or coaches, but they don't believe it's possible. So if they don't believe it's possible, they won't try it <clears throat> or somehow they got a mental block uh, or as uh, my friend T. Harv Eker, who, who wrote uh, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, uh, says... He says, uh, it's your financial blueprint. So it's your blueprint of what you believe is possible. And a lot of people have an unnecessary threshold, self-imposed, that says, uh, you know, like anything over $200,000 is excessive. So you know what I tell them? Yeah. I said, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I ran into you today because I got this cool new project. Uh, we can do a 50-50. Your cut will be $300,000. Is that okay? So what did I just do? I gave them a double bind. And so now they have to say, was I right about saying over 200 is excessive or will I accept the $300,000? And so you first have to acknowledge that maybe what you were thinking is incorrect and there is more opportunity and you can do more. So, and I'm just teasing when I do that, by the way. Uh, but you don't I'm put it. to have one of those $300,000 you, things that you got. You got another one? You got another oh, one cooking? Well, I, I, that, was, that, was, that was hypothetical. <laughs> Um, um, I actually do, but that was hypothetical. Um, but people put like, it's, I put, it's like a governor, you know, like when they put a governor on a motor or a car or something like that, it keeps it from going too fast. People put a governor on their possibilities. They put a governor on what they think is possible. They don't even realize they're doing it because they're programmed by good intention, but misdirected people that are often family members. And it's been programmed in their head for a long time. Money doesn't grow on trees. That, that yeah. that's for other people you haven't earned that it's only through hard work no it's not i'll, I'll take an easy road anytime let me tell you i don't, I don't want to yeah. work that hard i want to go work out and play so that's not true so don't don't think that it's just there's a cap and don't think that it is it's for them but it's not for me or they were given some advantage and this it's not true it's not true like i i literally could not read when I, in elementary school i had like four tutors because i couldn't read like I, I figured crap out. I do a lot of audio books now instead of physical books because it's easier for me. So I learned how to learn, but it doesn't I mean still you can't. Read the Krebs. What's that? I still, I still read, read the Krebs. Krebs. I read to him every night. Yeah, well, you got to tuck him in. <laughs> Fall asleep like a newborn pup. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he didn't like it so much, I wouldn't be so concerned. But you know, there is that. So so I can. I can oh my god. To answer your question, I can I can do the SEO stuff. I can talk about business practices. I can, but I but a lot of people tend to like uh, enjoy when I speak about planning for the future and creating your ideal average day, and and you know creating your empire. A lot of people don't yeah. think that's possible. So and like, but it is because it's, uh, here's the weird part, you guys. It's not that hard. You know what it is? Yeah. You're willing to do something when other people quit. That's it. You see things that other people aren't willing to see, and you keep going when other people quit. That's all. There's nothing more to it. Boom. Done. Done. <laughs> I think, I think yeah, that's, the, that's a big one for you to talk on. It's like creating that empire. I think that'd be okay. amazing. I just like that word. Empire. empire. Yeah. <laughs> I like the way I'm it rolls like off the tongue. That. <laughs> empire. <laughs> that sounded like a 1980s video game. <laughs> Uh, 
I think that, that that was awesome, man. I think like we covered everything we sort of wanted to, to go through today. What do you reckon, boys? You, you agree? Yeah. yeah, I think it was amazing, man. I think he definitely gave everybody something to think about and enough to uh, you know want get them get them out to Vegas and, and learn a little bit more from JSC. Well, like I, I, I think yeah, for sure. Like I really sorry, man. Sorry, JSC. Like I I really want to appreciate, it, man, because like. Me, I feel like I like I love listening to people above me. Like it's that's the biggest thing. Cause like you said, dumbest person in the room. Like I want to let I like scrape your brain for SEO for the next three days. So I'm just gonna keep this hangout going. Um, but I it, man. Like it was, awesome. it was awesome. So I appreciate you coming on yeah, for us tonight. No problem. Well, look, if if people don't come to your event in Vegas, they're crazy because. Um, I mean, look, I'm grateful that I get to speak. I'm, I'm totally honored that you guys asked me to do it. Truly. I, I'm, I'm truly flattered by it. In addition to me speaking, I mean, there's an incredible list of very, very successful and cool, helpful people. And, and it's the network and the relationships. And, you know, this, this is how we've all become friends, you know, through these kinds of events. So, um, it creates a lot of opportunity that you don't expect, but you have to be open to doing it. Um, and, and it's a good learning experience just uh, on um, group dynamics of the fitness industry and um, how to become an A player. But, but everyone's there to help. That's the cool part. Exactly. You got anything you want to add, Luca? No, I mean, I, I honestly, I mean, first I'd just like to thank JSC. Like, he, you know... <laughs> He's one of those guys, like, man, it, it, I, I like to talk, I like to listen, but, you know, you, you got so much uh, wisdom, I've done so much stuff that I could listen to you for all day long, but... Um, My wife you know, won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but, I mean, we wanted to bring on, like, honestly, the best of the best of the best in, in just different categories, and, you know, that was the, the reason for the name change in the game, to be honest with you, like, we wanted to piece together an event that, you know, you, you asked the question about, you know, what would you tell yourself when you were 20? Well, this is this is my answer to like what event would you put on if you know what event would I want to go to now that I know you know where I am when I was twenty, like having the top trainers, the top people doing mindset coaching, consulting, you know, program design, like how to do workshop, SEO, social media marketing. I mean, we and, and literally like we have, we haven't even finished with the lineup and it's already like insane. And the the goal was to like each and every single person. Can deliver ten times the value of, of of the event. Which, like, to be honest with you, you know, like the stuff that you'll be talking on, the stuff that you just covered here, you know, can literally change somebody's career in in, in fitness. And absolutely, and it it will be the best event. Like, I mean, like we're busting our balls on this, and like this will be the event. Period. So, no, I agree. I agree. It's I'm 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 so excited. I I can't wait, man. It's just fun to hang out with you guys too. Stay <laughs> <laughs> back at you, buddy. So guys, so like, uh, thanks again, man. Like, and basically everyone watching, guys. I just want to say, like, the the website will be up in the next couple of days, which will be on changingthegame.com. But at the meantime, this is uh, this. I just chuck this on my blog, which is the tjstory.com. And if you go to the health and wellness hangouts, there's a you can rewatch this, and also you can uh, basically click the link below this video, and it's hosted right now, and it's playing right now because I know people are watching it, and uh, it says. Is changing the game, picture of us and the boys, and you can pre register. Uh, we have about three, four hundred people pre registered already to get those uh, first couple of seats. It only went out last week, guys. So there is going to be a, lim a limited number of seats, obviously. We're limiting it to 500 people in the event because that's as, that's as many people's lives we can change in one weekend. Um, but I know this is going to sell out, and uh, this week, for everyone who does pre-register, you know, we're going to get this link out to you this week, and you get an extra half day with me, Luca, and, and Stevo talking business because that's what we're all about. It's taking your business to the next level. So thanks again, JSC, for, for jumping on tonight. And um, and everyone else, I can't wait to see you at the event. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, JSC. All right, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. All right. <laughs>